Good morning. It's good to see you all. I'm uh, so happy that you guys had taken the time this morning to come into the Lord's house. And I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. I would say I'm so glad to see you and all your shiny faces, happy faces. I gotta see some. Yeah, amen. Amen. But so I'm just praying that y'all are smiling back at me. But anyways, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can you say that with me? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Uh, just a couple reminders. I just wanted to remind you that in a couple weeks, um, on Friday, uh, October 30th, we'll be having our Trunks and Treat. I see that we have a little bit of competition now. Um, the well is actually uh, put out signs now for their trunk or treat too as well. So it's just down the street from us. So this is great ministry uh, to be able to collaborate and to work together uh, with that. So um, their starts at 6.30, ours starts at 6. So we'll have the opportunity to send them down there. So again, I truly believe that because that the well has added their trunk or treat, that we're going to be uh, have just as many kids coming out and parents coming out. So I hope y'all are ready uh, with your bags and bags of candy. And I hope y'all are ready to decorate your trunk so we can give praise. Um, I've included um, in your um, bulletin today some envelopes. We would appreciate any donations because we're going to be giving out these fabulous, you saw these already, fabulous donuts. There's a variety of donuts. Um, we're going to purchase these for a discounted price um, with your help. And um, we've already purchased a craft with scripture uh, to give out with our information and scripture on it. So um, we've taken that from the general fund. So we'd kind of like to reimburse ourselves on that. So we'd like to give out juice and donuts in lieu of bringing them in and playing games and having snacks. We'd like to give them something packaged to go. So this week and next week, we're going to ask for donations, your help to help um, defer some cost on that um, for the kids. And these will go with you in the nursery later. But and then, so we have the, uh, are the envelopes already in the bulletin? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the envelopes are already in the bulletin, so if you'd like to give a, um, I don't, um, um, a small donation, that would be awesome. That would be great. Well, you can give a big one, too. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if you can do that, that would be great. But, but I hope that you all participate with us on the 30th. It's going to be a great night uh, to be able to spend time together as the body of Christ and give Jesus. Um, I want to uh, let you know that our front porch discussion is going to be Thursday, uh, this Thursday, uh, the 22nd at 6 o'clock at Covenant. The front porch discussion is at Covenant, and there has been some um, uh, mentioning of actually taking our legal decision about merging uh, from June to March, from June to March. So um, we're going to take a vote on that on Thursday because it's up to you and on me on when we look in, when we make this legal uh, a vote between Covenant and New Hope. So please be there. We will also work on our question. If you already have been to the discussion already, then you would know the question is, is why does Covenant exist? Why does New Hope exist? And so there's uh, one question, three uh, so, uh, solutions, and then five steps that go to each solution. So uh, please uh, be at the front porch discussion so that way we can discuss how either churches exist and, um, and then go from there. So it's 6 o'clock. Thursday is our front porch discussion um, about the merge. Um, also, too, our charge conference is November 15th uh, at 1230, and that also will be at Covenant uh, because I'll be done with the service there. There was no need for, for me to come back over, so just uh, New Hope, just meet us over at Covenant at 1230 if you would like to be a part of that charge conference as well. Um, please, uh, one more thing, just give me your pictures uh, for All Saints Sunday, which is November 1st. I really need them by the 27th 
But if you're a procrastinator, you know, I can, you know, wait until the last minute. But just don't give me a mountain of pictures. But to scan them through for all six Sunday, uh, thank you for everyone who has been giving us pictures or giving me pictures. Just put them in my mailbox or just hand them to me. You can text me them. You can email me them. Whatever you need to do through social media, I can get it. Except for Facebook. I don't have one. So uh, amen to that. But anyway, so just give me your pictures uh, for November 1st. Is, are we all set? Um, any more announcements? Oh, yes, the ad board. Uh, there's an ad board meeting. That's right, Tuesday, uh, 4 and 30. Right, Jane, you're on with that? Good, we're good? Yes, there's an ad board meeting. Every third Tuesday of the month, there is an ad board meeting. See? Still for our still a Bible study? That's right. No, no, but thank you, Seal. No, there's no Bible study of the week that we have our front course discussion. Thank you. Uh, we do not have Tuesday Bible study because of the front course discussion. Um, it's very difficult for me to prepare for Bible study and prepare for the front course discussion. So uh, thank you again, Seal, for bringing it up. But we will not have that Bible study. Anything else? Jean? It is. Uh, we have an ad board meeting every third Tuesday. If we don't have Bible study, we can change it. So you can just let me know after the service and we can call. We can let people know. So pray about it. Think about it. Let me know. All right. Anyone else? Hit it, Jerry. Pray with me. Gracious God, you have provided us with more than we shall ever need. We thank you for this abundance and our ability to share what you have given us. Guide us as we strive to help others who are in need. Bless our small groups and let our works be mighty in your name. Open our hearts to always give freely and gladly to people everywhere. We are thankful for the laity of our church and around the world. Bless them. 
so that they can be faithful in their call to serve and do your will. We give you all thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the choir will sing where you live. Children, I need your help. Can I get your help, children? Come on over here. Good. Two, three of you, maybe I might need one more. Jerry, are you close by? Here we go. It's Lady Sunday. Today is Lady Sunday, October 18, 2020. It's Lady Sunday. Do you know what that means? What's a lady? Lady? The Jew. Oh, the Jew. <laughs> the Jew. There's clergy. There's people like Pastor who wear a collar, and they're called clergy. And then there's people like us, and we're lady, and we're all called. Do you know what that means? Lady, we're called. So I brought my phone. <laughs> Hello? Has God ever called you? Has he called you? Has he called you?
called you. God's called you. Have your phone handy if God calls you. But that's what Lady Sunday is all about, is being called. We're all called. Whether you have a cell phone or not, you are being called by God. And I brought some letters with me to spell something out. Because this is what the Lady Sunday is all about. You hold that one. You can hold that one. Jerry, you're going to need to come out over here. Because I need you right there. So Lady Sunday needs, our, our theme is, hold it up, hold it up so everyone can see it. Well, it's easy to remember because it's part of our name. It's hope, hospitality, offering Christ, purpose, and engagement. So our theme this year, and I'm going to read you what our laity um, has called us to do. So remember the hope theme. Um, Lady Sunday, therefore go with hope through engagement. Lady Sunday celebrates the ministry of all Christians to love God and all people. On Lady Sunday this year, we are to lift up each other, the laity and the clergy, to follow Jesus Christ and lead others to him. As we welcome and offer the good news of Jesus Christ through the opportunities of engaging and growing deeper in the wide faith that comes from relationships with those beyond the comfort of our own walls. People who are struggling with fears, loss, trauma, and injustice, as well as those who experience freedom and joy and delight. Let us all come together in justice and mercy and reconcile. This is the ministry of the all called, the laity. We are the laity, therefore go with hope and be engaged. So that's what Lady Sunday is all about. Us being called, you being called. You all being called. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, bless us today as we hear about Lady Sunday and learn about the hope and engage with others as we are all called in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I know Madison knew there was something in this box for her. Candy, I don't know why she's telling me. Do you want to tell me something in the box? Oh, yeah. There's a couple of them in there. There you go. And then there were those donuts over here. You don't want to miss out on those. Come see us at Trunk or Treat and you'll get one of these as well. Can you share? Share with your sister. Go in peace and hope. Hurry, God's coming. time in our worship where we can lift up our joys and concerns. Uh, hang on a minute. I need to go get my bulletin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a joy. Uh, we've been praying about, uh, praying for, I should say, Angela uh, English. She's uh, Pastor Eddie and uh, Rose's daughter. And if you remember this past, uh, actually just a few weeks ago, he was here preaching uh, with, he brought his parish, some of his parishioners and his wife came along with him. And uh, he mentioned to you about his daughter being sick with ovarian cancer in the fourth stage. And we prayed for her because uh, she went into hospice um, a few weeks ago. And so we were really praying for her. And um, what happened was, is last week we had our pastoral meeting in Orleans County, and Eddie came to me and said, guess what, Rebecca, um, all of our prayers are working because God is reacting because um, the hospice decided that um, for some reason, uh, Angela is getting better. So she is not fit for hospice. 
So they actually had to take her out of hospice. Here the doctor said there was nothing more they could do and she had eight weeks to live. And then we all started coming together and praying and we prayed as a church and we we're all praying and everything. And then hospice comes in and says, you're too good. You're too well. Yes, amen. So they took her out of hospice and uh, she actually is going back to the doctors for treatment. So amen, amen. The power of prayer and how God reacts to our prayers and that is the power of prayer. So I just wanted to bring that up to you uh, as well. Um, also too, if I can, uh, if it's all right with you, Dean Mansion, a story about Katie. Uh, Katie, uh, we've been uh, on the Katie was uh, and her husband was put on the prayer chain because of the fires uh, in Colorado, and um, so we've been praying that they didn't have to uh, evacuate out from their um, apartment or where they where they live. And so uh, Dee was showing me the pictures of how close the fire came to their house. And so Dee told me a story um, about how her, she asked her daughter how the air quality was or how they could breathe or whatnot. And her daughter had said that all the smoke, like she goes, Mom, there's nothing going on with us because with our place because all the smoke is going around our place. And when you look up from our place, there's absolutely nothing. So isn't that God? That is God working. And I hope I was able to give that story justice, but that is God working. And it turned out that the wind changed the course of the fire, so they didn't have to evacuate. And that's the power of prayer. Amen? And that's why we get together and pray most of all. So I want to make sure that we uh, bring up that uh, Debbie Pribble, amen, is expecting twins. Uh, so we're blessed to uh, we're blessed to be inside again, I guess. Yes, I kind of miss being outside though. But we're blessed to be inside as well. Uh, we want to lift up Elise Dominici. Uh, she has a lung procedure. Uh, Norman Katie and his family. Uh, uh, he is very ill. Uh, Sally's niece Eileen is having surgery or already had surgery. Um, to be in prayer, continue for Chuck and Diane as well. Uh, Chuck is in rehab at Father Baker. So be in prayer for him and lift him up. Uh, Pastor Eddie and uh, Rose continue to lift up Angela as she goes through her treatments. We'll have to take her out of hospice. Uh, Joan's sister, Diane, had a fall. Kyle Farr, we pray for him because Kyle was uh, injured in a car accident back in September. So please uh, make sure we lift him up in prayer as well for his continued recovery. We continue to lift up Jim and Denise as Jim continues through his treatments. Also, we uh, continue to lift up our firefighters, our police department, um, all of our doctors and nurses who are on the front line with COVID, any families who have been affected by COVID, our elections. Uh, this year, it's becoming um, uh, dirty, I don't know, uh, nasty sometimes. Uh, but that's how it goes in politics. But let's just continue. We don't have to be that nasty or abusive. So. Uh, let's just continue to lift them up in prayer, our leaders. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Lord, you heard our names, and we come humbly before you. You heard us uh, lift up all these names that are in our joys and concerns, Lord. And we do take this bulletin, Lord, and we adopt somebody, Lord, and we lift their name up to you all during the week. Because we know as your servants, Lord, as your disciples, we know that when we lift up these prayers, you hear our prayers and you react to our prayers, Lord. And we know this because of the miracles we see, because of the faces of God that we see come into our lives when we go through storms, because that you have all your disciples gathering together as one body of Christ. And Lord, we continue to lift up our prayers to you now as we sit here in your house. We continue to lift up all of our, uh, all of our um, uh, issues, our stresses that are within our hearts, and we lift them up to you. So that way we know when we lay them at your feet, when we lay them at the cross, that we're able to walk out of this place knowing that you're going to take care of us. 
And Lord, we just uh, lift up all of our law enforcement, our elections, Lord. We know that you hear our prayer. We know that you react to our prayer. We know that you uh, have a plan and a perfect plan for us and not to worry and not to be afraid. Even though the chaos comes in, the natural disasters come in, and they come as close as almost to our front door. But then we know that when we lift our prayers, you react. And Lord, as you taught us how to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Since it is Laity Sunday, I just want to be able to, I, uh, hang on a second. Usually, usually there's a group of uh, laity that I'd like to honor. Usually it's our Sunday school teachers or our nursery uh, attendants or anybody who works with us for the youth. But this year, especially because we went outside, I really would like to um, honor the worship team. That's who I wanted to honor this year. And the very first person that I would like to honor, and I hope that you give him lots of love, is Jerry. Um, Jerry, since June 14th, spent, uh, he came in at 7.30 in the morning, and he was persistent about coming in and being dedicated to come in at 7.30 in the morning to help put up those tents, to make sure all the equipment was out, to help coordinate the equipment. He was the one that did all the roping off in this church. He was the one that removed the handles. He was the one that made sure that you guys could worship in this church this morning. He is there. He's there during the week, as you know, behind the scenes. He has done so much extra than just playing the piano and the organ. He does a lot of coordinating behind the scenes, so I just want to offer him up again. So just please give him a hand. Thank you, Jerry. And the ladies who just what they did, they made bread. So, Jerry, please come up and pick your bread. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I also would like to recognize uh, Denise, our children's moment woman on the worship team. Uh, Denise it, it was there with us when we started taping as well inside the church. She was the all-time reader. You know, she was the all-time reader. She was the all-time uh, person that led you through worship and prompted you. And her uh, children's moments are awesome. She really helped me out here with the front porch discussion. I think this is great. You know, she really uh, does a slamming job with uh, the youth and with uh, the children's moments. So please give a hand to Denise and give her some love. <laughs> Thank you. Take your bread. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Tina. Tina is the one who uh, coordinates our technology. She uh, puts, she's the one that put out all the perimeters for us to try to stay in line, literally keeps us in line. Tina has been with us uh, since we've been taping inside the church when COVID happened. And um, she has been there for us. She religiously every week gets out the video to everybody so they can see it inside their home. And she is here to coordinate this camera every single week. And she's a blessing to have uh, with her great singing abilities and being in the choir. So Tina, I am so blessed and grateful to have you part of our, uh, part of our worship team. So please give Tina some love. <laughs> to order a worship in the bulletin and she makes sure that your bulletin is there for you every single week 
She sends off uh, the YouTube videos as well. She sends off the bulletin to you as well, and she makes sure that it is right and correct. She keeps Jerry and I in line when it comes to <laughs> getting the order of worship correct and on time. And so um, I would also, I uh, am grateful for Rana for what she does with that and being in the choir and being part of uh, running and prompting you in our order of worship. So Rana, thank you. Uh, I would like to honor, and this goes actually with my sermon, so I hope Len and Eden don't mind. I know Len is having a procedure, so uh, he's at home, but he'll see us on video, right? So I want to honor Len and Eden. Uh, they are actually part of my sermon for Apollo and Priscilla. Uh, so, but they are the power couple that on my on our worship team who are religiously here every Sunday. You know, uh, Eden is a voice. She has she's an angel. She she has a great uh, singing ability, and so glad that she's part of the choir as well. Uh, you know, Len is religiously every Sunday handing out that bulletin and making sure you all got your uh, drinks. He makes sure he takes your money. But he is here, and they're a power a couple. They are a uh, pleasure to have on the worship team, and they are a great asset and role model to all of us about how marriages should look like. I don't know. I, I think it looks like getting at home. But anyways, to you guys, to us, it's perfect. And you guys really role model in evangelistic um, how for us to worship God and be or for us married a couple. So please give love to Len and Eden. And Eden, please take two breaths. about the question with the front porch discussion is about um, 
is about why do we exist as a church? You know, whether we're covenant or new, why do we exist? You know, about hospitality, what do we offer to the church? How do we offer, what is our purpose as a church? And then how do we engage? You know, those are the, uh, actually those are answers to the steps that we need to do to figure out, you know, how, why we exist and how we're going to exist. Because if it is it for you all, uh, participating in part of the church service and be in the face of God, we want to have a church. So hug yourself and give yourself a hand because you are all the laity that puts the glue, that makes the glue to make this church function. So please hug yourself. Let me see it. All right.